Everybody, welcome back. X's and Knowles back at it with your boys. Presented by Knowles 24-7. As always, let's get the housekeeping out of the way first. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the Knowles 24-7 YouTube channel. Subscribe to Knowles 24-7 in general. We've got a great battle uh, partnership with the Battles in right now. Amigos, everybody, Predator Handshake, the two Titans colliding and working together <laughs> as a team. It's pretty awesome right now. We're in the throes of spring football. Reports are flying fast and furious on Knowles247.com. And right now, we're going to do something that I feel like everybody likes a lot. And that's player comparisons. We do <laughs> not rest on our laurels here at X to Knowles, presented by Knowles247. No, no, no. We've decided to take on the mystery man, the charismatic enigma, if you will. That's Jaheim Bell, a guy that is so versatile, so interesting athletically. It's very hard to find a physical comparison for him. But we think we've got one. Before we get to it, Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. Adam, how you doing? Oh, real swell, real swell, Trey. Uh, well, since you're so swell, I'm going to let you take the floor. Who do we <laughs> think, after kind of taking a peek at, that Jaheim Bell kind of reminds us of? Yeah, shockingly, it wasn't that difficult to find a comparison. <laughs> well, uh, now you just ruined all the secret <laughs> yeah, sauce. We all agree. Right great on back into the old Mike Norvell bag of tricks because he is Mr. He is the old offensive trickster himself, Mr. Offensive Weapon, an offense built for playmakers. Hmm. Trademark. Uh, went back to 2019 Memphis squad, 2018 too. I guess that he played there a couple of years. Uh, Antonio Gibson, now with the Washington Commanders. That's what they are. It's hard for me not to say Redskins, but that's not political the football team. anymore. So the Washington football team that is now the Washington Commanders. <laughs> uh, yeah, at Memphis, he was listed as a wide receiver, played a little running back, played a little wide receiver. Obviously, has had a, a career as a running back in the NFL with Washington. It was it, – it, Bell's a weird case. He's a tight end. But he's really just an offensive weapon. He played a lot of running back at South Carolina last year. Doesn't really line up at the tight end, you know, your traditional hand in the dirt tight end when mm. you think of that position. Plays off the ball quite a bit, moves around a lot. So it kind of did some similar things to what Antonio Gibson did uh, during his career at Memphis. He lined up in the backfield, played a lot of slot receiver, played outside a little bit, took uh, ransom. Ran some jet sweeps and that kind of that kind of run game stuff that you would see out of a slot receiver. Um, so some similar stuff that we think that Jaheim may, Bell maybe is going to do at Florida State, but potentially from like the three back, which is uh, that off the ball uh, H back that we've seen uh, Mike Norvell utilize quite a bit. So Gibson's listed at 6'2", 221. Bell's listed at 6'3", 232. So I mean, some fairly yeah, similar a little bigger, types, right? Yeah. A little size on them. Yeah, I mean, but similar similar qualities, explosive athletes, frames are about the same you know, or, or very close, um, pretty quick, good speed. We've seen a, a lot of we we've looked at a lot of Jaheim Bell film uh, already, so we I think we got a good sense of what he's going to be and what he is as a player. Um, but trying to find yeah, I mean, trying to find that body type and that skill set. It wasn't easy, but it was because Antonio Gibson was that for Mike Norvell. Right. And, and just to give you some, kind of a a preview of like the type of production Mike Norvell can have with a player like this, Antonio Gibson's senior year, 735 receiving yards, eight touchdowns, 370 rushing yards, 11, 11 yards per carry and four touchdowns. That's that's extremely effective, especially when you add it on with like, oh, you've also got Johnny Wilson. Oh, you've also got Trey Benson. Like, you've also got all these. You've got Winston Wright, who was extremely productive at West Virginia. It's adding an extra 1,100 yards of scrimmage from your tight end position, which yeah. was essentially not very productive for you last year. That's insane. So we'll see. We'll see what can happen there. Well, Kevin. You, you say that, though. Look at that Memphis offense we're talking about. Oh, they yeah. had Demonte Coxey. Oh, they had yep. Kevin Gainwell, who's with the Philadelphia Eagles. Coxey, I don't know if he called on in the in the NFL or not, but Great I mean, these are big time yeah. players. These are big time players in that offense, and 
at least two of them have gone on to be uh, pretty good players in the NFL in their own right. So there's, there's I think there's some good comparisons there. And the elite Brady White to I was going to gonna say, the and, then, and then to be <laughs> honest with you, the Florida State's large advantage at quarterback with Jordan yeah. White over, no offense, Brady White. It's tough to see because <laughs> that Memphis offense of 2019, I think, was top five in the entire country. And you, yeah, depending on the statistic, I think I think they were top ten in the advanced metrics, which is pretty impressive coming out of the AAC. I'm yeah, gonna be it, honest. I feel like we needed the old uh, the water boy, the the freaking coach, <laughs> on the old nipple rub there from you, Trey. Oh yeah, well sorry, <laughs> I can't, you're, I, quite, I, you're quite excited. Listen, I am excited. Like, listen, it's not like Chris Knee talking about Jeremiah Byers, but I don't want to get us an NSFW rating with me tweaking the old nipsies in my Iowa basement. I'll save that for another time. I'll save that for the national championship. Kevin, nipples aside, what do you think of that comparison? Pretty good. Did you like the Gibson one? It, it's weird because Gene Bell's a hard player to compare to. It just happens to be the one really good comparison was a Mike Norvell player from like four years ago. <laughs> Well, I, I think that uh, we've built a following uh, not because my opinions are good, but because I think that we let the film do the talking. And I think when you see them side to side, you can kind of see where we're coming from. So, uh, A.B., you mind pulling that film up for me? Yep, we're good. Literal side by side comparison. Yeah, we're going to try something new here, a little side by side. Let the, let the film run next to each other. We'll talk behind it. Yep. So we got a uh, Memphis on the left uh, and that's Antonio Gibson uh, and Jaheim Bell on the right. And really what I want you to focus on isn't necessarily what they're doing, but more how these bigger bodies are moving in space. So immediately so, you see Gibson on a little slant route. You see Jaheim Bell running the football. You see him line up at fullback. Yeah. And honestly, Gibson you will. see with Gibson on just a lot of, downfield route running yeah um and then over on the other side you see the same thing just yep torching a georgia cornerback good ball skills from both too yeah and, and you can just see that they're they're bigger bodies um breaking tackles run. downfield yep that can big run. physical players that can run run really well yeah and the ball skills like like trey was saying just yep. they're they're making catches through contact um really just Big bodied receivers slash big bodied running backs. So, uh, Antonio oh, Gibson over here. That run, that run on the left side. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, that I run mean, on the, the right side. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's really kind of freaky what they, how the two of them comp to one another. And how few of these guys are floating around college football at any given time. So that, yeah. that Mike Norvell's had two of them and in such a short, short span of time. I mean, you see the physical physicality that they're able to play with, finishing runs, running through arm tackles, and, and Jaheim Bell's doing this at the highest level, right, which is kind of the crazy part. We're out of the Jaheim Bell. That's all right. Jaheim Let's Bell watch a little film. bit more of Gibson. We were going to cut it short, but. All right, now we're going to watch Jordan Travis go off on Florida. Well, good, I like video. that. I'm always down for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the cool thing that's that the thing that's really impressive to me too, Adam, with both of these guys is the natural like comfortability as runners, right? They're not just mm -hmm. big guys trying to like bowl people over. They're elusive. They're agile. They see, man, I'm, especially like looking at Gibson too. I forgot how good he was in college and Bell's tape looks just as good against the Georges and the Clemsons and the things like that. So it's, yeah. It's freaky. It, it's freaky that both of these guys are going to be coached by the same head coach. And we found a good comparison in Jaheim Bell. But if you like who else in college football history would you compare like Jaheim Bell and Antonio Gibson to in like recent college football history that like pops? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I hate to say the dude's name, but you think about like a, an Aaron Hernandez. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just these kind of it's just these kind of off the ball receiver body type. Uh, tight ends. I mean, that, yeah. that's really where you go, but I think you've got to think bigger than that. And we're, and we're going to give Kevin a minute to get the uh, chalkboard pulled up and kind of sized up right for us to use and kind of talk about a little bit more about where we think he might move around at, where he might line up. But it's hard because I don't think Bell's a tight end, but he's not a receiver. He just, he's just, you got to label him as a weapon. That's what he is. And 
Antonio Gibson's kind of the last real weapon that I can think of off the top of my head of that size. A lot of times these weapons are 5'9", 165 pounds or 175 pounds, whatever. Like Debo Samuel types and like Tyree. Yeah, yeah. Like those are the guys that are lining up in the backfield. Very rare do you see a guy with that type of ball skills and running routes that also has that size in the running back position. It's right. it's it's weird. It's like the it's the, the jump their jumbo uh, Debo Samuels. It's it's yeah. obviously they're not as quick as him, but they're way well, bigger. Debo, right? The Debo is pretty. I mean, he's pretty thick. Is he? Okay. Right. Yeah. And you think of Tyreek Hill. I mean, he's a pretty fit, thicker physical player. But I don't know. Bell's Bell's a different case because he's a guy that is labeled as a tight end, but he's not a tight end. Um, yeah. So it's just weird. It's just weird. You don't typically see that. You typically see a wide receiver who plays running back or a, yeah. a running back who plays wide receiver. Think of Lawrence Tolfili. He's listed as a running back. He makes most of his hay, um, you know, line up at it in the slot at wide receiver. And we've seen him flourish in that role. So it's just different. I don't think that this is something you see all the time, but I mean, I'm pretty damn excited to see what, what Mike Norvell can draw up. If he can do some of that, we the, our last video, we talked about Jaheim Bell potentially uh, taking some of Micah Pittman's production away as, as Pittman, who knows what his status is going to be for the season with it, with his injury. Um, if they can get some of that physical or some of that uh, vertical passing game that we saw with uh, Antonio Gibson from Jaheim Bell, I mean, look out. That, that's, that's insanity. That's, I don't think that's he's crazy. a much, much larger target down the middle of the field. You saw a couple yeah. of those throws by Brady White where – you have more freedom to just throw it over linebackers. So right. yeah. um, that's a really tough throw. And every inch you get that you have freedom to, to kind of lob that ball up there is, is nice to have. Especially with Jordan Travis feeling way more comfortable going to that part of the field coming from last year. It's He's not going to be afraid to go to those guys no matter where they're lined up. Yeah, Are so I, I've got the blackboard pulled up so we can kind of get that going. <laughs> All right, so I think in that video we saw a lot of um, Antonio Gibson just playing pure running back. I think you're going to see a lot more of the of like two running back sets. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Gibson. I don't know. I I, I think they're going to want to use him downfield a lot. Uh, uh, I think kind of in this slot role. I don't think you're going to see him as an inline tight end at all. Um, maybe as kind of like a flex receiver, like you saw Johnny Wilson at times last year. Um, so you could imagine a scenario where, you know, you take them and you put them here and you kind of force the defense to, to kind of put a cornerback or, or something on him. And that's, that's a blocking mismatch. Um, but, but really I think you're going to want to see them get the ball in his hands as often as possible. So, yeah. Um, you see, you've seen, you've seen, well, you saw that with him at South Carolina, they ran some of that RPO stuff and they got him the ball quickly. I think it's important to get him the ball quick and then on the plays that develop down the field. Um, yeah. I don't think he's a guy you're going to run a lot of choice routes with. I don't think he's a guy you want to run, you know, like uh, I don't think you want to run stick with him, that kind of stuff. I, I think you're going to want to either put the ball on the running back's stomach and throw behind some linebackers in front of safeties with him challenge challenge if you get a mismatch of him on a backer challenge a backer down the field deep or get him the ball on screens get him the ball on little quick rpos um shallows arrow kind of routes get him the ball quickly and let him use his athleticism in space um yeah again this is this is what we would do with him and that doesn't mean that Mike Norvell is necessarily going to do this. True, very true. I mean, we're basing a lot of this off of off of a lot of film study. We've watched a lot of Memphis. We've watched obviously a lot of Florida State. Well, this is just kind of our opinions. Um, we're not giving away company secrets here or anything, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's very good. Good disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if they're watching. We're not trying to we're not trying to give away the goods. I mean, what what might be interesting to see if. Um... You know, are they going to take him? Are they they're going to pair him up with a Johnny Wilson? Um, oh, are they going to put them on the same yeah. side of the ball? We saw, stack, we saw more stacking late in the season. It would be interesting. 
that forces the defense. Do you really want to put two five ten five eleven <laughs> defenders to cover these two guys? That's it's not a hard place to That's be. Disgusting. So what's interesting is if when you do that kind of stuff and you put the back to that side, you essentially have to treat that as trips or some yep. version of trips because um, you have three eligible receivers over there. You start running flares. I mean, you, you can start doing a lot of crazy stuff, which is going to open up a lot of stuff for your run game, which we yep. know Mike Norvell's go and Alex Atkins. That's what they want to feature. They want to feature the run game. I mean, they want to be a running football team. So you start screwing a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of defensive coordinators and a lot of uh, defensive looks when you start putting six seven and six three with that skill uh, side by side. And another thing they'll probably you'll probably see pretty often um, is they yeah, love going they, to this little wheel game out of the backfield. And with someone yeah. as good of a receiver as him out of the backfield that's that's yep. pretty dangerous well I, w- I would expect to see him lined up in the backfield at least some i mean yeah mike norvell's run that pony backfield uh w- with two running backs in the backfield it-, it would make a lot of sense that you would put him back there some run some of your screen game to him uh, again yeah. try to find a ways to get him the ball um it's all gonna be all about mismatches uh, so if you can get a mismatch with him against a linebacker on a wheel if you get him uh, matched up in some screen game stuff, th- there's interesting ways to get him the football, and they're going to find him. Yeah, I, I think that'd be something. I'm actually looking this up right now because I, I think that's an interesting question. Because you did say matchup, and that that kind of would indicate to me that if I looked at his college stats, you'd see a big separation between different games outputs. So if someone's like an every down back, you're going to see, you know, they're going to put up, you know, a hundred. Yeah. Consistent level of production. Though, like he gets moved Uh, to running back last year because of injuries in South Carolina. His his career has been all over the place, unfortunately for him, and his production's been hurt because of that. Yeah, Kevin, you might want to look up like if Antonio Gibson had like eruptions of offense, kind of like how Florida State kind of took a. at least at the beginning of the year, each receiver kind of like took their turns, like being the productive guy. Uh, Jaheim Bell's thing was weird. Cause he got kneecapped into like, he's going to be in the backfield, a good amount for Florida state, but he got forced into it way more at South Carolina mm-hmm. necessity than I expect. So I wonder, I wonder if Gibson's career was like that, like, like eruptions and certain games predicated on matchups. We know Mike Norvell, if something's working, he right. will go to that. Well, until you stop it, if you can. So to yeah. give an indication, I'm going to kind of see if I can't show this. This is just a stat page that I that I pulled up. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to center it very well, so I might not show it to you guys. But basically, um, basically, you see wild fluctuations in how he used Antonio Gibson. There are some games where he rushed for 130 yards. There are some, some games where he got zero rushes. Um, there are some games where he... Um, his highest receiving game, he had 130 yards. His lowest receiving game was, uh, that he, that he actually caught a pass in was eight yards. So like, yeah, I mean, he, he can, they, he will probably fluctuate wildly depending on the game situation where they find that they can get the best matchup for him. Cause that's what they did with Gibson. You know, he wasn't always a running back. He wasn't always a receiver. He was somewhere in between depending on what the game dictated yeah that's just what they want to do that's where they want to live they want to find that one mismatch that they can take advantage of that one defensive player that they can attack over and over again yep. with a johnny wilson or with the run game and trey benson or with jordan travis's legs or um with a joaquin bell or with a winston or whatever the case may be right they want to find that one person i mean think about they attacked Miami with Pokey Wilson, and then they went to, and then once they once they started covering Pokey, then they attacked the other side where they found a weakness. Like they they're just going to keep doing that. They're going to keep finding the weakness, and they're going to keep attacking it. And as the weakness shifts throughout the game, then it's going to go somewhere else. So, like, you're never going to get like uh, there was a few times last year where you would get a game because Johnny Wilson's just such a freak of nature at six, seven and the way he can run that you can get him seven targets for 150 yards or whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, and Antonio Gibson, who's not a, he's a really gifted, talented athlete, but he's not six, seven, you know, that can run four or five or whatever. and has that crazy wingspan. 
it explains that there's going to be fluctuations because you can't just keep going back to that if teams start taking it away. If teams try to take away Johnny Wilson, well, he can still out jump everybody. Yeah, and his wings his wingspan's crazy. Jaheim Bell and, and Antonio Gibson aren't going to do that. So when teams start trying to take them away, then the ball's got to go somewhere else. Um, it's just I, I don't know how the hell teams are going to stop this offense. I don't know either. It's kind of like whack a mole on like on meth, yeah. right? You can never whack all the moles. You can't ever stop. And now it's different because it was tough to stop Florida State's offense, where there were playmakers here, playmakers there. There's playmakers at every single level now. See, Think of in games last year where they kind of fell apart. I can think of a couple times in LSU in the LSU game where, and I don't want to crap on Cam McDonald because it's not fair or Biscuit last year, who I think is going to have a take another step forward this year. Whoever would have played tight end, there were crucial times last year where a tight end dropped the ball on third down that would have kept the chains moving and maybe would have extended drives and led to points and victories. And a lot of times these happen in losses. It happened at LSU where they won that game. Um, I can think of times. I mean, think of the NC, NC, NC State, State. Yeah. Clemson. There were times where Jordan Travis went to that tight end because it was the look that was open, and they didn't make the play for him. Well, now you're going to have more skill. You're going to be able to line a Jaheim, Jaheim Bell up at tight end, but maybe flexed or off the ball or do some different things with it. And now that matchup changes. And well, you now, go ahead, Kev. In the NC State game, before we get too far away from that, Johnny Wilson was having a bad game. Yeah, He, he dropped several passes. It was yeah. un, uncharacteristically bad game for him. And that meant that who do you turn to as your as your man beater? Like they, they turned to Micah Pittman. Right. And we remember how that worked at the, end of, at the end of the game. I don't think that's wholly representative of, of who he is as a player. But now you have multiple guys that can be that number one, that can right. step up when Johnny Wilson... You know, he, he has the freedom to kind of have an off game and, and you have someone else you can lean on. They, yep. they took away some options and you became predictable. And that's a large yeah. reason yes. why you lost yep. the NC State yep. game on offense. You were unbelievably predictable. Now, it's, I don't know, dude. Jaheim Bell's like the great white shark in Jaws. Are you just like, are you just body surfing or is he like, you don't know where he's going to pop up, right? You don't know. Is it a kid with a fin on its head or is it like the actual great white? You don't know. So it's, you're unpredictable. And anything that you can do, especially when you play really talented defenses, you know, like Clemson's and the LSU's of the world, anything that you can do to slow those really great athletes, to instill some um, uncertainness, to instill some doubt Mm -hmm. that makes them play slower than they physically are, that's all you can do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well. That's all we could do for this one, guys. I love player <laughs> comps. Let us know if you guys liked it in the comments below. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? You don't have to tell us if we got it wrong. Nah, I'm just kidding. Constructive criticism. Anyway, tell us maybe put some suggestions in the comments of some other players that you want us to try to do some comps for. Mm-hmm. We'll do a little side-by-side film breakdown. Anything else, boys, before we wrap it up? No, this was fun. I like this. I hope we can do more yeah. of this. I think we will. And, uh, and I hope you'll be there with us. Just subscribe to everything, and we love you. Love you, Adam. Love you, Kevin. Viewers, ah, big kisses. Love you all, and keep chopping. Spring game right around the corner. Ooh. <laughs>